Alderman Lopez. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Alderman Jetty. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Laws. Yes. Alderman Cleaver. Yes. Alderman Harriet Gathray. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. 12 yeas, zero nays. Thank you, the uh, public hearing uh, is adjourned. And so we'll just take two, two quick minutes for anyone who wants to jump off and then we'll start the PEDC meeting. I know. Bye. <laughs>
If anybody has a problem accessing the uh, meeting via phone or channel 16, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help connect you. Uh, the, during the meeting, the public is, is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Uh, let's start the meeting by taking roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting that is required under the right to know law. Um, Alder and laws, can you please uh, call and ask the person to state the reason that we cannot attend, confirm that they can hear the proceedings, uh, and state who is present with him or her. Thank you, Chairman. Alderman at large, David Tenza. Uh, present, I can hear everyone, and uh, I'm alone. And I'm uh, staying home per the governor's orders. Alderman Jan Schmidt. I'm present. I can hear everyone. Uh, I am at home alone uh, for the emergency order. Alderman Tom Lopez. Alderman at large, Ben Clemens. Thank you. I'm here. Uh, I am alone. I, uh, I can hear everybody, and I'm at home per the governor order. And Alderman at large, Brandon Laws, I am here, I am alone, I can hear everyone, and I am following the governor's order as well. Chairman, we have uh, four members present, one member not present. Thank you. Um, communications, um, we have a communication from Linda McGee, Deputy Planning Manager, uh, regarding the referral from the Board of Alderman on Proposal 0-2012, amending the uh, zoning map uh, by rezoning the land off of Tinker Road from rural residents are 40 to be suburban resident uh, R18. There being no objection, I'm going to accept the communication, excuse me, communication and place it on file. Uh, second, we have a communication from Linda McGee, Deputy Planning Manager, regarding the referral from the Board of Aldermen on proposed 0 2013, amending the zoning map by rezoning the land off of Amherst Street from Park Industrial to Park Industrial with mixed use overlay district. Uh, again, there being no objection, I will accept the communication and place it on file. Um, there is no unfinished business. Uh, there are no business resolutions. Uh, the first order of business in front of us is 0 2012. Uh, we just heard about amending the zoning map by rezoning the land off of Tinker Road from rural residents R40 um, to be suburban residents. Um, Alderman Law, would you like to make a motion? Alderman Tenza, there's some other alderman in the meeting as well. For the record. Thank you, Alderman Dowd. Uh, so also with us, we have uh, Alderman uh, Dowd is with us, Alderman Liu, uh, and Alderman, is Alderman Jetty still here? Don't see him. Okay. O'Brien too, though. Alderman O'Brien. <laughs> Alderman O'Brien. I apologize. Yes, fine, all right. Alderman Cleaver is on board. Thank That's you, Alderman Cleaver. Um, so we just heard from Attorney Powell, well, sorry, um, Alderman Laws, is there a motion on uh, 0 Or anyone on the committee would like anyone like to make a motion regarding uh, 0 2012. Did you not, did you not hear me? No, I could not hear you. Sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I'm making a, a motion for final passage of 0 2012 by roll call. Okay, the motion is for uh, final passage uh, by roll call. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Uh, Alderman Dowd. Yeah, I just wanted to state that uh, we've been looking at this piece of legislation for quite some time. Uh, Sarah Marshan and I, Director Marshan and I had meetings on this uh, before the pandemic and uh, she's in favor of it. Uh, so I would recommend that we pass this. Alderman Tenza or Chairman Tenza. Alderman Laws. Uh, I see that there is a member from community development present at the meeting. Is that Sarah Marchant? Uh, 
I'll just go ahead and assume no. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, I was just going to see if she wanted to add anything to it, but that's all. Okay. <laughs> I think that was her opportunity to yeah. identify themselves. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Yeah. Um, Attorney Pronio, can I just, uh, just ask a clarifying question? Um, or to Attorney Pruny or, or Alderman Dowd. And ba basically, this um, this change will make it easier to develop uh, single family houses on these pieces of land rather than um, you know limit them to the zoning requirements of the um, suburban. I'm sorry, of the rural R40 zones. Correct. That's correct. They will be able to do it under R18. If it's passed, which is still a very large lot for the city of Nashville. Yeah, it's more in line with uh, what the zoning calls for. Sure. Can I, can I ask just generally, do you know how many uh, additional houses they'd be able to build on these uh, on this land that they chose to? I don't know. Uh, that would be it'd be some more. It would probably be uh up about eighteen or forty. Could be almost up to twice as much. But they're still very large lots. Okay. Thank you. Um, any additional questions? Uh Aldo and Lou. Thank you. Um I'm just wondering. I wonder when we rezone uh, lots of sections of the city like this, what is the um, initiating factor? Is it, um, did this uh, initiative come from the city or did it come from interested parties? I don't know if you can hear me because there's a lot of noise on my line. I know you're talking, but I can't hear <laughs> all the time. Um, was this who initiated initiated this? Is it the city looking to plan? Uh, to you usually it's the landowner. Available? You usually it's the landowner that does it, and usually there has to be some change, like in this instance, at the time that it was zoned, our party there was no water sewer. Now water and sewer brought to the site so that's why they need a septic system they don't need a well they have public water and sewer okay and just to follow up did you say that the city owns a large lot in uh, this area that they'd be able to develop develop a small no i don't know if the city owns a large lot in this area i don't think so Okay, no. I thought I heard you say that, but I no. I couldn't hear you very well. Well, Thank if I said know. it, I was wrong, I, because it doesn't. <laughs> I can tell you that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> Anything further? Further? Uh, any, any further? Alderman O'Brien. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with the noise here, just for a second, I just wonder if Attorney Crony, if, uh, if he can mute, from the chairman, if he can mute when he's not talking, uh, he's showing up that it's live on your microphone. And I just want to be out of the conference of the noise. Uh, but I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to say that I totally support this project. However, the city of Nashville embarked on a high approach study to look at certain areas within the city. Now, this has nothing to do with the development. And I want to clearly say it has nothing to do with the current firefighter's contract. But yet, as we look at the words that were put out by Fire Chief Rowe, where he cannot surface, uh, service the opioid epidemic because of the amount of time for uh, call and he's guided with the 15 minute limit uh, that it takes away from the emergency response. Well, if we look at the geography of the city and if we look at the run statistics 
and particularly the Fire Pro report, the 2001 report, uh, this is the area that they're exactly talking about. And as what Attorney Crony has said, at what one time, nobody really worried about it because uh, there was additional de development done earlier that put in water and sewer, and now this area has become attractive. So my comments are not against the development of this property. It comes with the usual caveats that right now we need to take a look. We have a pending study that is coming in to looking at the uh, fire department needs and wants. But the target is to get fire apparatus up there within four minutes. That is quite a feat in that area. When you look at one engine company, will be coming from the airport station on Pine Hill Road, have to go up Sharon Ave down Amherst Street, and uh, to perhaps cut up Thornton Road to get to that particular development. The other thing is to take a look at the second two, uh, the first two company would be the one that is located at Hammer Street. Hammer Street will have to travel up Manchester Street. Still quite a distance, those that are familiar with the city to get from Hammer Street to uh, the Tinker Road area. Uh, one can say, well, geez, let's look at it. National Fire Rescue has had recently a very increase for the last several years, increase in call volume. So it is therefore, uh, we've had uh, much more development. We've had uh, 34 Front Street. We had other places uh, uh, within the city that have been recently developed. We can't go shifting or cutting an engine company. I talked with this with the fire chief. We can't split engines and ladder companies. Uh, basically, it's got to entail. And you've got to remember that the city of Nashua at one time, this would not be an issue if the city of Nashua at its particular time continued, they purchased the land on Thornton Road to build a fire station. Yet, that was turned into, the city never built on it, a fire station, obviously, and it was turned into a pot lot. So the thing is, again, I am not against uh, old 20, old 12. Uh, that seems to be single family type of home. But the same is true on old 2013. And I would like to say I support this. I will vote for it uh, with the Board of Aldermen, but with the usual caveat. Again, we've got to look at our infrastructure right now. Uh, if we can't be helping people in opioids because of the time spent on the particular issues, we may need to readdress our fire protection and to the potential occupancy of this particular area. Yeah, some of this development is in an area where it's difficult for fire apparatus to respond to. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Okay, uh, Alderman Dowd. Yes, uh, that same reasoning is why I pushed to get the fire department their $50,000 to have the current study done to determine our coverage both uh, in that section of Nashua and also in the southern portion uh, where a lot of development's going on. As far as the response time right now, it's no different than any of the other many homes in the area. Um, so is not a difference in in response time because of the new development but if the de if the study determines that the city should put a station at thornton road the lot is there there's nothing on it that can't be moved it is a tot lot in the front part of it but the lot's undeveloped and it is there uh for a future fire station so um just wanted to make that point Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Uh, thank you, and I'm very supportive of Alderman Dow. What he says is true. I'm very much appreciative uh, of him uh, getting the new study done, working with Chief Rhodes on that. Yeah, the, the area there does have homes now, but what I'm talking about is the potential. When you have more, you have the odds increase of fires or accidents or other things. 
And what we need as a board of aldermen need to completely understand that Manchester has a population of roughly about 120,000, 112,000 people at 35 square miles with 10 engine companies and four ladder companies. The city of Nashua has uh, square mileage of approximately almost 32 square miles with a population of approximately over 90,000 people. That's Manchester has four more engine companies for 20,000 people than currently the city of Nashua. Again, I'm not against this, but I would really, my intention here this evening is to open up the debate. Uh, the firefighters have been right with the contract negotiation. The can has been kicked down the road for 32 years. It's time to stop kicking the can. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll uh, go to Alderman Cleaver first, then Alderman Clemens. Thank you. I'd just uh, like to ask who owns the property, who are the owners of the property involved? Attorney Prunier, did you hear that? Can you give us an indication on who, who owns the property currently? Uh, one of them, uh, one of them owns a small piece uh, over on Amherst Street at Shemak Properties, and the one on uh, Amherst Street. One second, I just look at the application. Whether it's correct, it's uh, Tinker Road Development LLC. Thank you very much. Okay. Alderman Clemens, do you have a question? Um, yeah, more of a comment. So, and maybe a question. Um, so right now, the um, you know, I I and I completely agree with what uh, Alderman O'Brien was saying. Uh, about making sure that as we develop these areas, especially particularly in the north end off of Amherst Street um, the, and Manchester Street, that we are looking at the fire department's ability to service that area. Um, I believe, and I've been saying and advocating for years, that uh, th on Thornton and Deerwood Drive, there's a connection that goes down to basically the through sort of the northern part of the airport and connects down with uh, what I believe is airport road or perimeter road down there. Um, and right now it's a it's a gravel road uh, and it's gated access. And the the fire department doesn't like to go down there because it it ruins their apparatus. However, if that was paved uh, and the fire department had access to that, that could potentially cut down the um, the time that it takes for a company from the airport fire department to get to those properties uh, in question, as well as other properties that are further out on Amherst Street, because there would be no um, obstruction or traffic. They wouldn't have to you know, go here or there uh, to get there. So, you know, I'm wondering if this legislation could, um, you know, because one of the things that the city also has is is a lack of funding problem. And I'm wondering if this is something that if these developers want to develop this property, uh, that they could contribute to something like paving that uh, that road so that we could help the fire department have better access to some of these areas on Amherst Street. I don't know if that has been looked into at all or uh, if it was discussed uh, with this or with the fire department. 
So I, I, I'll say that I, I don't think it, well, right now, nothing has come before the planning board because, um, you know, obviously the developer is, is looking for this zoning change before they propose anything. Um, I, and I, I'm not sure that the planning board has the authority to uh, require that that sort of um, contribution. I see Alderman Dowd uh, would like to speak on the topic as well. Yeah, two things. One, I don't think that uh, the way we're, our laws are structured that we'd be allowed to have them pay for a road that's nowhere near their property. Uh, I think we can make them do things on their property and, and do adjacent roads if necessary, but uh, I think if you check with Attorney Bolton, that wouldn't be allowed. The other thing is that I've talked to the fire department many times concerning the uh, that road that was mentioned, and they don't want to use it for a number of reasons. Um, and I'm not sure that currently the way the airport's structured, they want them to use it either because they would have to go through a minimum of two gates, and the fire department hates gates, <laughs> as Alderman O'Brien, I'm sure, can tell you. Gates slow them down significantly. And I know that because I was the chairman of the airport authority. I know that gate out towards Amherst Street takes forever to open. It would be faster to go down Sharon Avenue unless there was an accident. But um, to pave that for the, the occasional use to me would be a waste of money. Well, if I, if I could just respond. First of all, the street is off of, that is an adjacent street, if you look at the map. And secondly, it, in fact, it's a continuation of the same street. And secondly, the, the other portion of that, and the, probably the more important portion of that, is we need to think outside of the box in regards to how we are going to uh, get more fire coverage to the city. Now, you could say, okay, we can build a new fire station off of um, the same road, uh, but the issue is, is that if we were to do that, now you've got to pay for the firefighters to staff it, and then you have to buy the apparatus that goes along with it, and then you've got to maintain that apparatus forever. So we could pave a road, get gates that are faster than the ones that are there, or uh, we could build a new fire station and it would cost, you know, millions of, of dollars. Um, we need to think outside of the box is my point. And um, I'm not sure that the city of Nashua can do much more development like this in the future if we're not going to be willing to uh, look at solutions um, for these types of things moving forward. Thank you. Any further discussion on uh, 0 2012? Okay, seeing none, I will have the uh, clerk please call the roll on the motion for final passage. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Lopez isn't here. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Laws, yes. We have four yeas. Uh, and that uh, passes, that ordinance passes. Next on the agenda is 0 2013, uh, amending the zoning map by uh, rezoning land off Amherst Street uh, from Park Industrial to Park Industrial with mixed use overlay districts. Uh, Alderman Laws, I will uh, ask for a, a motion on this ordinance as well. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I make a motion for final passage of 0 2013 by roll call. The motion is for final passage. Uh, any discussion on 0 2013? Alderman Dowd. Yes, this this particular change in zoning is, is uh, incorporated with the, the thinking from the Community Development Division, uh, uh, again, at several meetings with Director Marshan. Uh, this zoning would probably happen when the master plan is done, but that's not anytime soon. And I've been involved with the zoning on Amherst Street for the last 25 years since I was chairman of the zoning board. 
And we did a similar one of these and it's worked out quite well, closer down towards Sharon Avenue. The overlay allows for, for use of the property without having to go through all of the time and expense of going through the, uh, the different boards to get something that's automatically gonna be approved anyway because the history is there of the, of the prior approvals. But this overlay gives the community development director and the division uh, much more latitude on, on approving projects uh, within this district uh, in a timely manner. Thank you. Any further uh, questions or discussions on 02013? Uh, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, much what I said earlier uh, applies uh, to this, to 2013 uh, as well. So to save and expedite the meeting, I'm not going to get heavily into it. But this is an area that is difficult for the Amistry Company to get up and also to for the airport company. And I would just like the, uh, to keep in mind, it's not so much getting the first two there, but when you've got a fire, that means you're all alone. And when you're all alone, you're less effective. And that's when you need somebody to get you water, a water supply into operation. And uh, so therefore, again, this is why they came up with the four minute rule. So it's the same thing. Uh, I'm not against this. I'll support it when it comes to the full board. Uh, however, again, my attention here is to start the conversation that has been negated for 32 years. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Dowd. You know, I'll state for the record right now, if the study comes back and says that we should have a station at on Thornton Road, I'll be the first one to sponsor the bond to build it and outfit it. I live right near there. <laughs> Any further questions or, or comments? Hey, you know, I'll, I'll just mention too, as a member of the planning board, that any any site plan. Um, will for these properties will go before the planning board again. Uh, any site plan will be reviewed uh, by the fire department and the fire marshal's office. Uh, and so there'll be another opportunity for these issues to be raised, uh, you know, both with the study, the fire study that uh, should be coming out this year and um, the, uh, you know, site plan review through the planning board process. So uh, seeing no other uh, questions or comments, I'll ask, uh, Alderman Laws, to please call the roll. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Locus is not here. Alderman Clemens. Yes. And Alderman Laws votes yes. We have four yeas, zero nays. Uh, and that ordinance passes. Uh, there is nothing tabled in committee. Uh, any general discussion from members of the committee? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Clements. Can you give us an update as to when, uh, and, and maybe I, I, I should know this, so apologize if it's already been announced, but when is the next meeting for the umbrella ordinance coming up? It will be, uh, I believe it's June 29th. Um, we had hoped to do it much sooner. Uh, however, with the requirements for public notice and the Telegraph not printing a daily paper, uh, you know, we're, we're limited to uh, putting, putting notices in only on the Sunday paper. Um, for whatever reason, we looked into trying to do it with the union leader. Uh, that wouldn't work out for Corporation Council. So uh, towards the, I believe it's Monday the 29th, will hold the public hearing and meeting on the umbrella ordinance. Okay, thank you very much. Any other, uh, Alderman Dowd? Or uh, Attorney Prunier, uh, can you, do you know which full board of Alderman meeting this will be brought up at? Is it uh, gonna be at the next one on the 23rd? I, 
I, I can answer. I'm not sure Attorney Prudy would know that, but I believe it will be for his benefit to get the date that he has to be there. If I were Attorney Prudy, I would be there on the 23rd. I'm sure it'll be on uh, on the agenda, which comes out on Friday. Any other general discussion? Remarks by Alderman. Seeing none, um, no need for a non-public session. Alderman Laws, would you like to make a motion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn by roll call. Okay, the motion is to adjourn. Any discussion? Uh, if you could please call the roll, Alderman Laws. Alderman Tenza. Yes. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. And Alderman Law says yes, four yeas, zero nays. The meeting is adjourned at 7.50 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.